Good evening. Thank you. Um, before I start the quarterly update, I just got a couple things. I want to thank Ms. Hammond, and I think she's already left. Uh, we have a couple issues uh, locally. Westgate, uh, our staff took care of that in Route 159. I wanted to thank her personally for the uh, removal of that one tree that was hanging over the road. Uh, it's pretty dangerous. Also, I want to um, uh, let Ms. Cox know that uh, we are having a community cleanup day in your district on Jan uh, April 15th at the evening from 4.30 to 7.30 and April 28th uh, from uh, 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. We're going to begin at Stonewall Market and work our way up down that street. We're going to be a community volunteer between citizens and sheriff's office personnel. And what time on the 15th? The uh, 4.30 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. Okay? Okay, I provided each of you a packet uh, with uh, a lot of information. And uh, the reason I gave you the packet is so that maybe you could take it home and, and do some reading on uh, on your free time if you have any. If you're like me, you probably don't have very much. But uh, I want to thank you guys for the uh, opportunity to appear for you tonight. And uh, so today uh, in, in Allegheny County Regional Jail, we had uh, 72 inmates. Uh, a lot of you realize that we are a, a jail that has been built for 56 inmates, uh, but we're able to accommodate more than that, uh, a lot more than 72. So uh, we're, we're doing well. We've, we've been able to uh, manage the, the population very well, and we only have one inmate being housed off, uh, off-site. Uh, during the past quarter, uh, you will see from the uh, paper that I provided you, um, we have processed 210 inmates in, in uh, this quarter in our regional jail. Uh, we've conducted 55 transports, which have equaled 9,029 miles and 309 and a half man hours. Um, that, that's a lot for, for such a small, small jail. Uh, that includes, uh, you know, anything from, from court transportation to medical transportation. And we have been eating up a little bit with medical transportation uh, to and from Roanoke Memorial Hospital for a couple of different surgeries and uh, some also uh, you know, uh, bedside uh, security services for uh, inmates that have been hospitalized. Uh, our VDOT work crew, um, on the back there you have a, a, a paper and this is a uh, program that is uh, supplemented to the county by VDOT. Uh, we have 15 inmates in the program. Two were recently removed for some uh, violation of jail rules, 14 of those, uh, males and one female. Uh, I'm going to browse through this. Uh, 420 officer hours and 770 total inmate work hours. Uh, in, but invoiced to VDOT $14,700 for this quarter. That's pretty good uh, uh, money coming back to the county for, uh, for the use of our inmates. And they're doing a, a really good job. Uh, a couple of the inmates have been offered employment by, v, by VDOT after they finish their sentence. And that is, the, that is my goal as the sheriff uh, of the regional jail to uh, try and rehabilitate them into some type of an employment situation. Uh, also, our, our work crew and our trustees, uh, they have done an enormous amount of work in the jail since January. Uh, they have, we have painted the entire sheriff's office. Um, that includes, uh, we, I'm sorry, we still have the inside of the jails to be painted where the inmates are housed. Uh, numerous, uh, numerous details have been conducted and I've also started a program with the inmate trustee program of walking the main streets of Clifton Forge and uh, Allegan uh, Covington to pick up trash on Main Street. This will uh, do two things. It will let the public know that our, our inmates are conducting the work, but it also lets the citizens know, uh, and, and the city of Covington, it reduces the man hours that their public works has to uh, perform on Main Street. Um, our dispatch, uh, our dispatchers were mentioned a few minutes ago in the fire EMS study. During this quarter, our, our dispatchers have fielded 1,433 fire and EMS calls. And uh, you break that down, that's about uh, 350 uh, or so uh, per, actually it's a little more than that. It's about um, right at 500 uh, per month. And that's just fire and EMS calls. That's not counting all the phone calls that come in for uh, I need a deputy or I need someone, uh, there's someone reckless driving on my, on my road or, or those kinds of calls. And, and to, to get those numbers for you would be uh, almost impossible. Uh, but I do have some other numbers that will kind of match up with that for you. Um, 
our CIT, Crisis Intervention Team. Um, I was not able to get a lot of numbers on them this, uh, due to their reporting requirements are the 15th of the month. So I was uh, unable to get you an accurate number for them. But I will say that I have received numerous comments, uh, commendations on our CIT staff. We only have three, and they are covering Allegheny County nearly 24 hours a day. Uh, we have a schedule worked out to where they are they are covering the county, and they're still able to maintain days off and, and, a, and a healthy uh, lifestyle. Uh, they're, they're transporting. They're uh, sitting with mental health uh, case studies or cases at the hospital. And they're also responding with our, our deputies to mental health calls. So if they're at the hospital and a deputy gets, a, we get a mental health call, they will respond from the hospital to that call with hopes of um, calming the situation and then also possibly transporting for the deputy not to tie up the deputy any longer than we absolutely have to. Um, civil papers. Our civil process team has served 2,424 civil papers. Uh, uh, actually civil and uh, criminal papers during this quarter um, and that's a lot also so what I'm planning to do hopefully um, on the next budget cycle is utilize one of our court bailiffs as a part-time civil process server and that will uh, that will alleviate a little bit of the work off of our civil process uh, deputy. Our animal control officer probably the busiest deputy that we have in Allegheny County he answers numerous calls. Uh, every day he's, he's conducting follow-up investigations. Uh, during this quarter, he has answered 231 calls by himself. Uh, of those 231, he has followed up 196 different times on those calls uh, due to dangerous dog calls, uh, situations to where uh, you know, he has to investigate animal bites, uh, and also, uh, during this time, 46 dogs and 27 cats have, imp have been impounded into the animal shelter. Uh, that is, can be stray dogs and cats, or that can be also animals that have been removed uh, due to neglect or uh, owner unable to take care of them. Um, our school resource officers. Uh, during, during this quarter, uh, we've had 14 school safety checks conducted. Um, we've had four DARE classes taught. To our elementary schools and uh, um, all after school activities um, our, our, our football games our, our basketball games our uh, different uh, events that are taking place after school uh, all of those activities have been covered uh, our school resource officers handle most of those but uh, whenever they can't handle them we have jail staff and we have road staff that handle the security of those events we always try to have at least two present at, at each event, uh, and that's an officer safety issue. Plus, it's just a, it's a it's a force multiplier uh, for the uh, the administrative staff as well at the school. Uh, Mountain View Dare graduation will be on April 19th at 1 p.m., and we'd like to invite anyone who would like to attend that uh, from the from the uh, the council here, and then uh, also um, our patrol deputies. Our patrol deputies answered 3,808 calls for service. So uh, of those were the 1,434 or 33 fire and EMS calls. Because we always send a deputy to those calls as well. You never know what you're going to run into at a fire scene or at, at an emergency medical scene. Someone may be uh, distraught or someone may be erratic and, and just need to be uh, brought into control. Uh, it may be a family member or something uh, other than the person who needs the, the uh, care. Um, 227 persons were arrested by, by Sheriff's Office personnel. Of those 227, 115 of those were felonies and uh, 112 were misdemeanors. Uh, that's, that's a pretty significant amount for such a rural area that we have and uh, I'm hoping that we will be able to, to continue with those arrests and, and maybe add some to those because of our, our drug task force investigations and those kinds of things. We have been busy and uh, we've, been, um, we've received reports from our task force that they are working other investigations currently at this time and we plan to, uh, to act on those soon. Uh, 150 incident-based reports were completed 
Uh, that's our IVR system that we have to report to the state of Virginia. Anytime a, uh, that a charge is made, an IVR has to accompany that charge. So that ties the deputy up with paperwork after the arrest is made, but we're able to handle that. That's no problem. The, pro the, um, the technology that we're, we're getting is, is making that a faster process as well. Uh, during, the, uh, during the quarter, we issued 216 traffic summonses, and um, some of those were on the interstate, but if you've noticed, uh, since January, we're trying to patrol the county roads more. We're trying to get out there and, and slow people down in, in your communities and, uh, and, and be seen. I told the deputies, we don't have to write tickets, but if they choose to, they can. We, we need to slow people down, and the way to do that is to turn the blue lights on and conduct traffic stops. Be visible at the bus stops. Be visible at the places where are highly populated in certain communities. So that way people will know they should not be speeding through those areas. Uh, and we traveled uh, during this quarter 163,800 miles. And uh, that's a pretty significant amount of traveling if you think about it. But that is 24 hours a day coverage. We do have a long county. It's uh, 42 miles long if you go from one point to the other on the interstate, and then uh, all the side roads uh, taken into account. That's, that's a lot of travel. Uh, as I said, I provided you with a packet. It's a, it's a rather lengthy packet, but it is a very informative packet. If you'd like to take a look at that, uh, I would suggest you do so. If you have any questions about this packet, please feel free to reach out to me, uh, and my staff will be glad to answer any questions that you may have. And I have one more thing to, uh, to add. Uh, hopefully this evening our new website will be up and running and uh, I will uh, make notifications on Facebook and those kinds of things. But it is an absolute, uh, I'm going to say it's an absolute beautiful website. Um, our, new, our new provider has done a really good job on that. So I'll ask you if you have any questions of me at this time. Board member, questions or comments? Um, information, thank you. Yes, sir. Very important. I, I wanted I wanted you to know what you're what you're paying for. So thank you. For thank you very much. Uh, uh, yes, uh, yes, ma'am. <coughs> well, so I guess it would go with this in a way. But um, I know at Bowling Springs School we have a no parking overnight, and um, we hadn't had any problems lately. I mean before, but I'm starting to see more and more, and now it's getting warmer, and uh -huh. youth are coming down there. Um, so what's the best way for me uh, to contact someone uh, for the sheriff's department to come up and run those plates? I usually try to take pictures, right. uh, but, but sometimes there's people there, and I don't want to make them. I, I had a phone call on, on that uh, particular uh, matter. Um, mm -hmm. I think there's a couple of trucks that park there overnight, mm -hmm. and they get there early in the morning and, and start those diesel motors up. And, idle for a pretty long period of time and neighbors are, are woke up. I've actually asked them to call us when that happens so that we can have someone come up there. We have people you know, out all, all hours of the night and they would be glad to come up there. Um, I'm, I don't think the county has a noise ordinance, but if we have signs up that say no parking overnight, yeah. we would definitely enforce those. Yeah, there, there's, unless somebody's taking it down, because when we first had it, somebody did, they took it down, uh -huh. and it was put back up. But um, <coughs> my concern is, um, you know, that, especially during the day, because when I see them, it's, it's on Sundays, mm -hmm. it's on Saturdays. They're not doing work on Sundays because they're sitting there when I go down okay. at sometimes eight in the morning, and when I come uh, to work, and I don't leave, I don't come back Bowling Springs till about twenty after seven on a Monday morning, and they're still sitting there. Okay. So I do um, not trying to cause problems, but you know, it, it to me it does need to be enforced. Um, Certainly, so. I'll be glad to have our uh, our shift supervisors take a look at that and, and uh, take care of any issues. Okay, I just don't want to see a, any child get hurt. No, ma'am, absolutely. Yeah. Because, you know, they, they see nice or fun-looking things, so they're going to go try to operate. Yes, ma'am. So, <laughs> thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Sure, thank you. Thank you. Y'all have a good evening. Okay.